Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is September the 16th, 2020. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let's talk about the Dylan White rematch with Alexander Povetkin. But first, let me digress a little bit. You know, this Logan Paul, Floyd Mayweather fight, that's laughable. I'm guessing that if someone who was in pretty good shape decided he was going to play basketball, a one-on-one -on -one game against Michael Jordan, they might find themselves overmatched. Let's just say Jordan will have seen better defenders, more experienced opponents, more serious opponents, then some guy who's in pretty good shape, who's taken up boxing as a hobby, right? And who has a public persona that sells it to fans. Logan Paul doesn't belong in the ring with Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather has exactly the kind of skill set <clears throat> that would age well. Understand, Mayweather's not Roy Jones. He's not a guy who relied heavily on his reflexes, right? You're talking about a guy who had great technique, who defensively could stay in the pocket and not get hit. He's a fighter who professional fighters, in fighting against him, had a hard time finding him in the ring. Not only that, Mayweather's exactly where you don't want him to be these days if you're an opponent. According to reports, he's in the gym helping train people like Devin Haney. So this is that worst possible combination. This is like playing Michael Jordan after he's been in the gym hanging out with young phenoms, right? John Morant and others. And you think you're going to beat him. It's not going to happen. Logan Paul's going to have a hard time finding Floyd Mayweather. Don't be too confused by the Conor McGregor fight. Mayweather was carrying Conor McGregor. Right? Mayweather came in willing to get hit in that fight. If Mayweather comes in with a different mindset, if he treats this like he treated his career, Mayweather's going to know that his opponent can't hit him. His opponent is not ready for the sharpness of Mayweather's punches, right? Let's remember, Mayweather won the belt against Oscar De La Hoya, Boxing Hall of Famer, at 154 pounds, and he was badly outweighed in that fight. Mayweather, I think, at the weigh-in was like 151. So don't be fooled by the size. Don't be fooled by the fact that Logan Paul looks ripped. Big deal, this is a sport. Right? You could look ripped and not know how to play baseball. You could look ripped and fall apart on a soccer field. Why do we believe that guys who look ripped are qualified to hop in the ring against some of the best fighters in history? When they post the odds for that Mayweather fight, I'll be taking Mayweather. I wouldn't be surprised if Mayweather decides to end the show early. He gave the fans their money's worth in the Conor McGregor fight, because you and I know he could have stepped on the gas earlier. But he gave you a few rounds. Well, this time he's fighting a different personality, right? He understands that unlike McGregor, who hadn't been boxing, Logan Paul's been boxing. The worst thing that could happen to Logan Paul is Mayweather deciding to make a statement. If that's the case, this fight might not go six rounds. I like Floyd Mayweather against Logan Paul. I'm not even going to hedge the play. Right? Boxing's an optical illusion. Everyone who's been in a street fight seems to believe they can hop in a professional fight. Folks, there's a difference between amateur fighters, people in the Olympics, and long-time experienced KG vets, right? 
time and time again, we see these guys enter the sport and they say, oh, here's the bronze medalist, or here's the silver medalist, or here's the gold medalist from some Olympics. And the guy's overmatched. Overmatched. The guy runs into somebody, Terrence Crawford or somebody, who doesn't have a medal and gets destroyed. Now, those are guys who box. Those are guys in the sport. You're telling me some guy outside of the sport thinks he can take on the sport late? This would be laughable in the NFL. Right? Absolutely laughable. You know, let me play quarterback, even though I'm in my 20s and I haven't played college ball or high school. Come on, that'd be laughable. It's laughable here. Easy win for Floyd. Easy work. Let's talk about another fight that I think is going to be easy work. Folks, this is not the first fight between Prevetkin and Dylan White. I just read that the rematch is supposed to take place in November. I hope that's wrong. Now, first, let me offer a disclaimer. I didn't like the idea of Anthony Joshua fighting Andy Ruiz after getting his butt kicked the first fight. I thought it was too soon. Well, Joshua proved me wrong. Not the first time Joshua's proven me wrong. Joshua proved me wrong. But understand the way Joshua won that fight. He wasn't in the pocket against Andy Ruiz. That wasn't a carbon copy of the first fight. No, Joshua had the better legs than Ruiz. So in the second fight, Joshua moved, was outside, was hiding behind a jab. Think about it. One of the biggest punchers in the heavyweight division was moving and sticking, or sticking and moving, however you want to look at it. This would be like watching a Deontay Wilder fight, and suddenly Wilder concedes the pocket, isn't even trying to land a big right hand, is just moving around the ring against the guy silly enough to come in the ring out of shape and heavier than the fight that won him the heavyweight crown. Right? Well, understand, Dylan White doesn't have that luxury against Alexander Povetkin. Povetkin's the better athlete. Povetkin certainly is going to be the athlete just a few months after the first fight. Right? Understand, both guys knew there was a rematch clause. This isn't news to Povetkin. This isn't Roberto Duran at some cafe someplace, and then Mike Trainer, Ray Leonard, Ray Leonard's representative, sees Duran feeding his face after he beats Ray Leonard, and then says, hey, we'll pay you a lot of money for the rematch. No, 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 this is different. Prevetkin, who's always in shape, by the way, right, he's always in shape. Prevetkin knew there's a rematch clause. He understood he had to stay in shape. So he's in shape. He's ready for this fight. Let me just say, boxing has this testosterone culture where, you know, a fighter gets knocked unconscious. Right? He's hit. He goes down. Cannot get up in 10 seconds. Is counted out. And we're supposed to overlook that injury. And we're supposed to believe that the guy can then get up, dust himself off, and say, hey, I'm going to fight this guy in two or three months. If you had a relative who's gotten in a car accident and he was knocked unconscious, unable to move or answer questions for 10 seconds, well, I got to tell you, you know, when Uncle Fred gets taken away from the car, when Uncle Fred starts remembering what his name was, you're going to be thinking to yourself, you know, Uncle Fred needs to take it easy for quite some time, doesn't he? Well, why is it that any of us right now believe anything Dylan White has to say? You saw him get knocked out. Folks, that was a 
brutal knockout. This wasn't a knockdown where the guy's laughing and then he tries to get up and he mistimes the count and he gets up at 11. No, 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 no. Dylan White's hit. Dylan White is hurt. Dylan White is out. I don't care if he's eventually able to open his eyes. I'm just telling you, sometimes the guy is out and his eyes are open. Look at Paul Williams at the end of his fight against the great Sergio Martinez. So this guy just had major drama. Major. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a theory that boxers are just like the rest of us. Boxers are human, too. See if you've ever been in a car crash. I know I have. You know, I got to tell you, it takes a while to feel comfortable driving on that road again. You're not back out there the next day. Right? No, no, it takes a while. If you've ever fallen down a flight of stairs, right, it takes a while for you to take that staircase for granted again. Right? Sometimes people sucker themselves into believing, oh, that car crash, that's no big deal. I'm just telling you, from personal experience, when you're driving down that road again, suddenly, the first time's in your head. Suddenly, you're holding on to that wheel with two hands. You're leaned forward. You're driving slower. Dylan White might think that, oh, we just got caught with a shot, and oh, you know, we had the other guy down twice and stuff like that. He's playing a card player. I'm still wondering what Prevetkin was doing early in that fight, getting hit with Dylan White's jab. That's not Prevetkin's style. Right? I get the feeling Prevetkin's a card player who set this thing up. Well, the one thing I know is that the two guys think differently, at least in my opinion. Right? Dylan White fights slower than Alexander Povetkin. Dylan White has to see things. Then he reacts. Right? He's making adjustments. He's observing what's happening. By contrast, Povetkin is the guy who just runs and jumps in the pool. Right? Povetkin's outside. He decides, you know what, I'm just going to jump inside, throw a few right hands and see what happens. Folks, he's throwing heavy punches. Heavy punches at Dylan White early in their fight. In a fight in which he gets knocked down twice. Right? Understand, he stops Dylan White after himself hitting the canvas twice. So while Dylan White is going to be in there having flashbacks, right, you could forget about the first fight, and then you know the rest. It's the second fight. You're in the ring. You look at the guy, and suddenly they're flashbacks. This is like running into that ex-girlfriend you haven't seen for a while, right? Well, let me just tell you, here, they just were in the ring a few months ago. If you see your ex-girlfriend three months later, you're going to remember the last time you saw her. That's going to come back in vivid color. Let me also say, too, the men know things they didn't know the first time. Povetkin knows he can get dropped by a Dylan White shot and can get up and continue the fight. Povetkin also knows he's faster than Dylan White. He's seen it in the ring. Before, he was looking at film, and he thought, oh, gee, well, you know, what's his brother really like in the ring? Right now, he's been in the ring with him. He knows he's faster. And when I say faster, faster foot speed. Moves around the ring a lot better can get in on Dylan White, catch him by surprise, have Dylan White reacting to him. 
So I believe this fight is going to be a bad one for Dylan White. I'm expecting a repeat. I thought the advantage Povetkin had was structural. I thought Povetkin got sloppy, I'll concede. The second knockdown was a brutal one of him. He gets up, he looks hurt to me. Povetkin has a poker face. Right, so even when he's badly hurt, he looks like he, you know, is just hanging out. But understand, by design, Povetkin got really aggressive at the end of the round. Right, he knew, okay, if I get dropped here, the other guy doesn't have enough time to finish me off. Also, think about it. He gets up. It's not like Dylan White is the kind of guy who just runs in and starts throwing big shots. He's not Mike Tyson. This is a guy who calls himself the body snatcher. He's prepared to hit you in the body for several rounds to chop you down like a tree. He has a great jab, but again, as I've said before, you can neutralize the jab with superior movement, foot movement. Right? Dylan White can't get as low as Povetkin. Povetkin knows that. He's not as sudden as Povetkin. Povetkin knows that. I know the ages favor Dylan White, right? Povetkin's in his 40s, for crying out loud. But understand, Povetkin, before this fight, fought Michael Hunter. He's still fighting younger Lions. He fought David Price. David Price has a punch. Right? That was a rough and tumble affair. Alexander Povetkin hasn't been fighting cream puffs. He's actually fighting decent competition. I think Michael Hunter, style-wise, would give the big three. Right? Fury, Wilder, Joshua. Problems. Understand, Hunter already had a very good fight against Usyk. Povetkin fought him, started terribly, loses the early rounds, makes adjustments, was able to get a draw in that fight. That's the fight before he fights White. So I think White's going to have flashbacks. He's still not as fast as Povetkin. I think Povetkin should be able to make adjustments. He should be able to look at the film and realize that he was a bit reckless. But understand what happens when you have flashbacks. That means that the right hands that Povetkin's throwing at you, now you know they can hurt you. The left uppercut that you ignored, that ended the fight, now you know that punch could knock you out. So now you're there reading the feints against a guy who's coming in with lead combinations, who's episodic, who might decide, okay, let me move a little bit more, avoid his jab entirely, fake like I'm coming in. You can imagine Dylan White is going to be biting on every feint. Because he'll know if he doesn't defend himself from the feints, he could get stopped. This is a bad fight. It's happening way too soon. Right? This is one of those fights where I understand Dylan White was in line for a shot at the heavyweight title. I understand if he didn't take this immediate rematch, it might have taken him a year to get back in this position. That's assuming he was successful in other fights. I understand without the immediate rematch, it's a much longer road. But I need for you to think about the flip side of this. If he gets destroyed by Alexander Povetkin, folks, you know, he's really going to be in the back of the line, isn't he? Understand, many of these boxing contracts allow for one loss against top competition. When you lose twice, then the promoter starts to ask himself questions like, gee, 
is this guy even credible against a top contender, right? Eddie Hearn won't say that publicly. I'm just telling you what's happening privately. Right? You get dusted off by a guy. Twice. Let's say Povetkin kills Dylan White, and White's on the canvas really hurt. I'm just telling you, they're members of the White fan club, who at that point are going to say, you know, our guy needs some time off. Right? I'm telling you, medical clearance for his next fight won't be automatic. He'll go in, he'll tell the doctor, hey, I'm feeling great. And the doctor will be thinking, isn't this what this brother told me last time? Before his last loss. Right? So I think White is risking way too much here. Way too much. I believe it would have been better for him to say, you know what, I'm going to waive that rematch clause. Brevetkin at 41 could have gone on, fought whoever, right? If Brevetkin lost since he's 41, he would have fallen out of the picture a little bit. If Brevetkin won, then Dylan White could be showing up and saying, hey, y'all saw me knock this guy down twice before, before getting stopped on a lucky punch. I'm still here. Where's my shot? Right? This is the wrong decision. Fighters are human like the rest of us. I believe White's going to have flashbacks. I believe there are things that White cannot make adjustments for. Right? He's not going to get the foot speed of Alexander Povetkin. He doesn't have the Anthony Joshua option of deciding to stick and move against an out-of-shape opponent who doesn't have the legs. Right? That's not going to happen. Let me just say, too, we view the fight differently. When we know that one guy won it the first time, there's a crowd in boxing that's going to side with the favorite. Right? They're going to look at the fight, they're going to say, oh, who do people expect to win? The guy who won the first fight. So let's say it's a close round and stuff like that, but the guy who won the first fight threw some big punches and it's close. If Dylan White were favored, a judge might say, I'll give that to Dylan White. Since he lost the first fight, I'm just telling you, some judges are going to say, oh, let me give it to the favorite. Now the burden is on White to show us that the first fight was happenstance. I don't think that's going to happen. The bet I'm recommending is Povetkin to win the fight. Hedged with White by KO. Right? White has a puncher's chance. But I'm just telling you, he's in against a superior athlete. I don't care what the age is. And the memories, not just of the fighters, but of the judges, favor the superior athlete. I'm expecting Povetkin to repeat his win over Dylan White. I'll hedge the play with White by KO. White should be the underdog in this fight. You should get tremendous odds for a hedge on White by KO. But I need for you to understand the risk involved. If Dylan White is able to go the distance against Alexander Povetkin, or if Dylan White is able to have amnesia, about that knockdown and only remembers the part of the first fight, and I believe this is extremely unlikely, where he knocks Povetkin down twice. If he only remembers the good things and has the kind of mind where he could forget the bad things, and if he comes in with courage and he doesn't remember the prior car crash, if he beats Povetkin by KO or decision, well, not by KO, because you have the hedge, but by decision. Then you lose it all. I like Povetkin to win, hedged with White by KO. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.